Well, hello there to my wonderful lovelies on Facebook. Hello to my wonderful lovelies on Instagram. So good to see you. I'm Donna Hoffman. They call me the interior design advocate because I advocate on behalf of women everywhere throughout the United States and beyond to help you to turn your design results around, to help you to create those beautiful results that I know you want at your home. I know so many of you underestimate how talented you are, how smart you are, how capable you are. It's not that you don't have the talent and the smarts, you are missing design strategy and that is the only reason that your projects are not going the way you want them to go and if you're disappointed with the way your home is looking, something's off in the way you're putting together your strategy or you just don't have strategy available to you. So Instagram, my picture looks a little blown out here. Katie, could you just lower that window shade a little bit and let's see if that helps any. That didn't do much for Instagram. Okay, well, there it is. Sorry, Insta, there it is. So what are we talking about today? Well, today we are talking about how to stop playing small when you're designing your own home. How to stop playing small when designing your own home can take a couple of different turns. And we talked about it here at our design team. We, I also run a luxury design company in the Philadelphia region of the United States. And we looked at what do design lovers do that holds them back and that really gets in their way. And there are two categories. One are the design things that you're doing and one has to do with mindset. So we're gonna talk about both. And I would love to hear from you what is it that is holding you back? Where are you playing small in designing your own home? But anyway, so first thing I want to tell you that I think absolutely hurts your beautiful results is the fact that you are not focusing your energy in one room and really finishing that room. When you start to spit a little bit of energy, focus, brain power, money, all up throughout your home, throughout these rooms, and you never really finish any one room, Nothing feels good. Nothing. Instead of playing small in those ways, because you're feeling budget overwhelmed, I get it, so you don't want to do one big thing, focus all of your resources, all of your time and energy in one room and get that room really fantastic. And then once that room is fantastic, then you can start to branch out into the next space, next space, and the next space. But keep focusing your energy because when you squander your energy, that is always, always when we find that people's results go steadily downhill, nothing feels good, nothing feels like it's done. And the way your home looks and feels absolutely affects the way you feel inside your own skin and the way you function in your life every day. So let's stack the deck in your favor. So one way that you're playing small is that you are frittering your energy, your time, your resources, your budget, your brain power into too many projects at once rather than really drilling down into a single project. And I gotta tell you, here at our design studio, we don't take every project that comes to us in the moment that it comes to us. We put, you see that board back there? We put people into a schedule. We know how much design we can output at any one given time to make sure that we're maximizing not only the result and um, experience that a client is getting, but also so that we know that we've got the brain power, the creative brain power to put onto every project as we need it to have that attention. And if we have too much on our plate at once, quality is going to go downhill. Creative quality goes downhill. So what I'm sharing with you about focusing your energy in your home in one space rather than putting it all over the place, guys, that's something we do as design professionals as well. So the coach practices what, she's, what she preaches. Then another way that you're playing small, don't get mad at me because you know I love you and I'm telling you this because I love you. Um, home goods, home sense, a lot of fun to shop in those places but you gotta stop buying all the little furniture there. You know what I mean? I'm talking about that little 24 inch high two drawer chest that's 18 inches wide. It's a little teeny thing. And I'm not talking about a great little martini table that sits at the side of one chair. I'm talking about all the little itty bitty tables and you're buying them because, oh, it's cute and it doesn't cost a lot of money. So I'll just pop it in my daughter's room and, oh, that's cute. It doesn't cost a lot of money. I'll just throw that into our living room. Oh, that's cute. It doesn't cost a lot of money. I'll just shove that into my living room, my, um, my, um, my, my office. And before you know it, you have all these little itty bitty things that are disjointed and little. And you add to that the small furniture that you may have inherited from relatives, the small chest of drawers, the small table. And I'm not just talking small this way. I mean short. Um, 
I, I just was teaching at a conference not too long ago, our Design Diva conference. I forget what workshop I was teaching when I said, show some examples of the little furniture. Um, little furniture is not easy to design with. It starts to clutter your space. So if you have a lot of itty bitty pieces, give them away, find a new home for them, be brutal and edit because furniture needs to be in balance weight wise, visual weight wise with the other furniture it sits next to or near the other furniture in the in the room as well as the architecture of the room. How tall is your ceiling? I'm getting a thumbs up on that one. So you're going to be you're playing it small if you're accumulating all the itty bitty furniture, the Barbie furniture. So that's the second way you're playing it small. The third way way that you're playing it small is that you are underestimating your most powerful uh, now I'm going to leave this one. I'm going to leave that one. Uh, the third way you're playing it safe, I'm going to come back to that one. The third way you're playing it safe is that you are going all beige or all white. Not because it's a specific style choice. It's because you're afraid to do anything other than that. You just don't know how to get out of a mm, colorless or or, or, or achromatic, a, a, a non-colorful, what am I saying? Mono, monochromatic non-color space. Now, if you're doing that on purpose, that's great. But if you're doing it because you are afraid of making a decision, afraid of making the wrong decision, you're playing small. If you are missing design strategy when it comes to mapping out a room with color, getting your paint color can be beige or cream or white, but what else is happening inside the room? If you don't know how to get it right, learn how to get it right. You're missing design strategy, and I hate to break it to you, another Pinterest picture is not going to teach you the strategy that you need. So you're playing it small when you're afraid to make a decision, and then nothing looks good, and, you're, and you are capable of so, so much more. Another way that you play it safe and play it small is letting other people's opinions kind of tell you who you are in design, whether it's a blogger, whether it's an Instagrammer, whether it's a design magazine, whether it's your mother-in-law, your best friend, your sister, uh-uh. Those people are advising you based upon their design fingerprint, what they love in design. That doesn't mean that's what you love in design. And it doesn't mean it's what makes you feel good in your, in your environment. Our environments absolutely affect the way we feel. The aesthetic we're surrounded with affects the way we feel. So don't let other people tell you who you are. Make sure that you are on top of, this is how I like my color spent in a space. This is how I like pattern in a space. These are the colors that feel good to me in a space. This is how much color. These are the kind of shapes and, and silhouettes that feel good to me in a space. Woman, know thyself. Know thyself. Nobody knows you in design better than you. Don't buy into the latest blogger. Don't buy into the latest trend. I'm getting more thumbs up on that, but it's true. Amen, sister. Okay, and if you are letting other people tell you who you are in design, you're playing it small and you're going to always <clears throat> hurt your results in your home. And then another way that you're, and I'd love to hear from you. How do you feel like you're playing it small in your home? Where are you giving your power away as a brilliant design diva? Where are you not stepping up to the plate and making it happen? <clears throat> and then the last place I, I, I have to mention, I know we've been talking about this topic for the last couple of weeks, but it's still... It's still there. It's still present. If you are ignoring your window treatments, you're playing it small. I don't care if your window treatment is the simplest balance. I don't care if it's a simple, beautiful um, solar shade. I don't care if it's a simple um, plantation shutter. If you ignore your window treatments, as in keeping your windows bare or keeping your window treatments looking really dated, you're playing it small. You're letting your fear of a topic tackle you and bring you down to, the, to your knees as opposed to screw it. You push up your sleeves and say, what do I need to know to be able to redo this window treatment, whether it's ready-made, semi-customs or customs. I don't care what you spend. It's not what you spend. It's what you do with every dollar that you do spend. Window treatments are one of the most impactful elements in a room, more, more impactful than the bench at the foot of your bed or your coffee table or your accessories or the new sofa. The window treatments are surrounding your focal point, all the window and glass in a space, windows and doors. So you've got to pay attention to what's happening on those windows. And if you're running away from window treatments because you're afraid, sister, you're playing it small. And I don't want you to do that anymore.
In fact, segue, I do want to let you know, and I do want to see what, what's, where you're playing it small, but I want to invite you to my brand new free workshop called Conquer Window Treatment Confusion. It's happening tomorrow and Thursday at noon Eastern as well as 8 Eastern. Noon at Eastern, 8 p.m. Eastern. Hop in there. Registration is madness. It's absolutely filling up. We keep increasing the amount of seating that we have. I didn't think we were going to do that, but we did to try to accommodate as many people as we can. Make sure you get your seat and get in early so that you are sure of not getting locked out. Sometimes when a lot of people try to sign in at once, things go haywire with all this tech nonsense. So tomorrow and Thursday, Conquer Window Treatment Confusion. I'll be teaching about how to break down your specific window treatment uncertainty so you know exactly where you're tripping, um, why the ideas in your head are falling flat. I'll be sharing some great strategy for how to make sure that you never cover up too much view or window. The great strategies so that you know what your design move is doing to your room in total, to your architecture, to the windows themselves as well as to the function on that window as well. And a couple of surprises I'll keep in the bag and a great gift I'm giving out, gift or two actually that I'm giving out. So you definitely want to show up and get there, get that seat. So you can um, hop over to that link that we put up. Did we put up the link? I hope we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we put up a link so that you can grab your seat. So I want to know from you guys, before I tell you what we're talking about next week, I want to know how you all are doing, how y'all are doing. Okay, so I'm getting lots of hellos from Cindy. Hello, Cindy. And Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl and Kim. And I'm getting waves and stuff from people on Insta. So thank you. Thank you, my Insta lovelies. Um, Patty is saying hi. Cheryl is saying that a big problem for her is brain meltdown, doing the whole, having a whole house to do. So hopefully what I said really resonated for you, Cheryl, that Breaking it down, don't do the whole house. You know, how do you wash a two-ton elephant one inch at a time? Break it down. One room. I know you're going to be tempted to do a bunch of the rooms. One room. Everything looks dated to you. To be. Too bad. Tough beans. One room. Update one room. Knowing that adjoining spaces are going to follow suit when you're ready. One room. Pull your energy and focus it and you'll see great things happening, Cheryl. Um, Maria said that she loves going to see model homes to get ideas, but I'm afraid of not knowing what is a trend and making my home look dated in a year or two. <clears throat> That's a great point, Maria. Um, yeah, model homes are definitely going to be the trendiest look because honestly, builders don't think you're that smart. They don't. They don't think that new buyers are that smart. The, the, the prevailing wisdom, and I love builders, but the prevailing wisdom is that new home buyers, whether you're looking at a, a, a pre-built residence or a new model home, the prevailing wisdom is that people don't have any visual ability. They can't see past what's there. So builders hire designers who specialize in model homes, and what they're doing is they're doing minimal furnishings to try to make the rooms look as big as possible. Got to look past that device. They are doing the trendiest colors, the trendiest things. You know things are trendy if they're showing up in model homes, if they're showing up on all your TV shows, and if they're showing up in the magazines, you know they're trendy. But here's what I would say to you, Maria. Design what you love. And be careful of putting deep trend into non-movable elements like your tile or really expensive elements like, you know, flooring, permanent flooring. But then within that, you cannot outrun the trends, guys. You can't. Do I think shiplap is pretty trendy? I do. I think it's lovely. And I love Joanna Gaines. I think she's a sweetheart. It's trendy. So I wouldn't do it all over your home. If you're going to do it, you know, maybe you want to do it in a powder room. So I think there are certain elements, Maria, that can get kind of trendy, but the most important of all is that you design what you love. You're not going to redesign your home every five years or every seven years. Who does that? Nobody does that. Designers don't do that. Design what you love. And then when it comes to updating, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, Maria. You might just change a wall color or maybe some pillows will change or maybe a new accent chair will come in or maybe new bedding will come in in seven or 10 years as you're refreshing and updating things. So. Don't be afraid, woman. I'm giving you a pat on the back and telling you to go, go, go. Question from Insta, or um, how do we sign up for the workshop? Okay, you can click the link in my bio, or you can go to window-boss.com 
forward slash workshop. That's window-boss.com forward slash workshop. And that's how you can get a seat. So thank you so much for that question. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting yeses and exclamation points from Terry. I don't even know what that was for, but I'm glad it was good. Terry, good for you. It was good for me. Um, Shelly's saying hi. Hi, Shelly. How are you? Um, Joan is saying guilty as charged on the little tiny furniture thing. Joan, knock it off. Now listen, Joan, you are in good company. We, I see that all the time as a designer and I see it in my students when they send me their before pictures, I think, mm, we got to let some corners breathe. We got to open this up. Honestly, buying the little furniture because it's low cost, you may as well just flush your money through a paper shredder. You should. It is a waste of money. I would rather see you write yourself a check for what that little teeny piece of furniture would cost, stick it into your portfolio or into a savings fund for the new chair you really want to get for your home office. No, not a phone call from a telemarketer I'm telling you, are you guys just inundated by these phone calls from telemarketers? I can't stand it. Sorry, Instagram for that little thingy there. Can't stand it. We have this no, no more, no mo robo. It's this thing we put in to stop the telemarketers from calling our landline. But on my cell phone, it's driving me bananas. Sorry for that. Anyway, what was I saying? I was talking to, who was I talking to? I was talking to Joan and all the itty bitty furniture. Stop it. Stop, stop, stop. Walk away, back away from the little piece of furniture. Like I said, write yourself a check to your portfolio or a savings fund so you can really save up for that beautiful bench that you want to have at the foot of your bed. That's the right size and the right scale. One of the biggest DIY mistakes out there is furniture proportion problems. Don't do it. That little teeny furniture is showing up purely so that you will buy it. You don't need it. Trust me, it doesn't help you. Um, okay. Barbie Furniture, Terry liked that one. Good, Terry, glad. Patty is saying hi from Cleveland. Can't stay. Will this be available to watch later? Yes. It's the lives live on for a while on, um, it, on Instagram for 24 hours. Facebook lives live on ad, ad infinitum. But also, guys, you can always go to our YouTube channel and see any of our videos to include our Facebook lives if you missed something. So good question. Getting hellos from Jamie Ross. Hi, Jamie girl. How you doing? Emma saying hi. Irma saying hi. Hi, Irma. How are you? Gail is saying, this is by far the best live session I've heard. Good info. Good, good info. Good. I got a double good from you. Thank you, Gail. Joan is saying, I finally added a simple balance to my living room windows, which has been bare for, oh, about 20 years. <laughs> it has made a huge difference. Everybody notices it and compliments it. Joan, I am so glad. Yeah, that is what you want to do. You want to attack those key big bang for the buck areas and window treatments, definitely one of them, which is why I'm doing a new free workshop and a whole new course on window treatments. Pam is saying, I moved into my house with good rods already in place. Awesome. That's a good savings right there. My curtains are too short and I don't want to move the rods because I'd have to paint, paint and patch. I got a coordinate fabric and I'm going to sew it on the bottom as a wide hem to get them to the floor. Pam, A plus, smart design diva. And if you don't sew, you take it to your tailor and say, just attach 18 inches of this to the bottom or whatever. I'm making it up. Brilliant move. Brilliant move. I love it. Carmen is saying hello from Atlanta. Hello, Miss Carmen. Uh, Evelyn is saying hi. Hello, Evelyn. Elaine is saying, I have views from the dining room and living room, southern exposure, no drapes, just sunshades to pull down when needed. How do I make them look better? Elaine, I would want to know how, um, I'd want to know honestly what your design fingerprint is. What do you have in your adjoining rooms? That's a gorgeous, brilliant question, but it's a general question, kind of like, I've got a pink bra and red underwear. What should I wear next Thursday? I don't know. I need more information. But you can definitely warm them up. You can add panels. You can add balances. You can add cornices. Whoops, that was me banging my ring. So, but I'd want to see what's going on in your space. And I'd also want to know what your budget is. I'd also want to know what your design fingerprint is. So brilliant question, but I need more info to answer you well. Question coming in. No, I'm getting a, a, a warning. Two more questions. I, we're running out of time here. Um, Joe Allen is saying window boss, question mark. Yes, Window Boss is the course that we are launching and opening up to the world. And it launches tomorrow at noon, something like that. 
fabulous course. It's all of it. It's where you learn the pros and cons to every type of window treatment out there, how to treat every type of window out there, how to work on your own windows, how to create a plan without spending any money. It's a big, beautiful, deep dive, all taught on video. And that course called Window Boss is the course that we're opening up. And in honor of that course, I'm launching with a brand new free workshop. So you can get a little taste of what's in the course, get, have some great meaty takeaway. That may be all you need, lovely. And that may make you go, put on my superwoman cape, my design diva cape. I'm ready to go tackle my window treatments. This is all I needed. Or you might say, hey, I want to come further with you on, your, on this journey and learn more about window coverings with you. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. So that is what Window Boss is about, um, Joe Allen. Carmen is saying, how do you feel about faux fireplace surrounds to an electric fireplace? I really want that to be a beautiful focal point in my open concept space. Carmen, as long as it doesn't look like a Barbie fireplace, as long as everything doesn't look little. If you have an electric fireplace that really that box looks big enough, to handle the surround you put around it, great. But if it's gonna look like a little baby surround, I wouldn't do it. I think nothing, we were taught in design school, nothing is better than something bad. Proportion is everything. So putting, I've seen well-meaning, brilliant women put these teeny little electronic or electric fireplaces in rooms in the hopes of creating a, a, um, a fireplace and it, it just doesn't work. So I. I, it's all about proportion. And without seeing pictures, babes, I can't answer you better than that. Um, bum, 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 bum. Um, let's see if there are other questions. Uh, moved into a new house. I'm indecisive. That's Joe Allen. If you're indecisive, Joe Allen, that's either who you are in life or you don't have enough strategy. And I think when you have strategy, I think you become much more decisive. But I always say what you are in design, you will be in life. If you are impatient in life, you will be impatient in design. If you are indecisive in life, you will be indecisive in design. So indecision and design do not work very well because design is nothing but decisions. And you've got to make a decision and move on. And make a decision and move on. You can't start redoubling and looking back at your decisions from the past or yesterday or an hour ago. you got to make a decision and move on. That was a drilled into my head in design school, and it was so true. Um, silly question. Shelly says, is this a two day workshop? Oh no, no, no. The free workshop is about an hour and 15 minutes, noon and 8 PM tomorrow and noon and 8 PM on Thursday. It's an hour and 15 minutes, which includes a nice generous Q and a at the end. I promise I'll try to get to as many of your questions as possible. Um, the course that I'll be, um, launching as well concurrently you could binge watch that course, but at your own pace, because those are videos that you would have, have access to. So I hope I hope I answered you there. Um, bum, bum, bum. And I think I have all my questions taken. Okay, I see people are answering for me as the interior designer. I mean, that's good. Uh, should your two, okay, last question from Linda. Should your two end tables in your living room match? No, mm -mm. I prefer they don't. If you want a high-end look, okay, if you want that Pinterest look, if you want that, you know, house look, that magazine-worthy look, designers, we don't do the matching coffee table with the matching end tables. We do things that are in conversation with each other. They look happy, mar happily married together, but they are not the same. You can keep your finishes in the same degree of, of depth, okay? Uh, you can keep your shapes similar enough that they look like they're a happy marriage, but it shouldn't be matching. That's a good question. So let me tell you what we're talking about next week. This is a good one next week too. You ready for this? <laughs> next week, the topic that we're doing for Facebook Live is Pinterest, use it the right way or get sucked into quicksand. Pinterest, use it the right way or get sucked into quicksand. I got a heart on that one. So I know somebody resonated with that one. Listen, lovelies, I see there are more comments and questions, but we've got to go. I've got more to, more to do in my workday before we wrap things out here. So I will see you next Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on Facebook Live for Pinterest. Use it the right way or get sucked into quicksand. And if you are joining me for our free workshops tomorrow or Thursday, I can't wait. I've got some great stuff. Yep. Oh, great stuff mapped out in there for you, ready to just take you under my wing and help you to do great things. So big hugs and kisses to you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.